so the 4th of July, this is when we celebrate freedom, this is when we think about freedom, this is when we say, yay God for holiday, yes? yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When we feel freedom in our own hearts, like in this moment, if you took inventory of your own life and, and asked yourself how free you felt, yes, I feel free, no, I don't feel free. I would wonder how big the no column would get. Do you know? And I know how big your no column would get. It would be much larger than your yes, I feel free. I feel free to choose what I might have for lunch. I don't feel free to choose what I have for dinner. You know, it could be just that simple. Think about it. Is everybody with me? I see people thinking, well, no, I think I feel free. <laughs> no, I, I think I feel free. If you really sat down and looked at it, so often we're governed by subconscious choices that have already been made and choices that are made by others. So choices that are made by others and subconscious choices we've already made. And those things combine to create a stability in our world, but that stability also can somewhat limit the feeling of freedom. Everybody take a breath. All right. In our world, now I'm going to talk broad stroke everybody. You're off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In our world, people are always looking to be defined. They come into the world, we grow up, and we say, who am I? Who am I? What do I need to do? We look for guidance, and we look for the world to tell us who we are, to define us. We particularly look for our religions to tell us who we are. Who am I on the earth plane? You know, this mankind journey no one has down yet. So we are still searching for the directives. And the other day I was talking with Spirit and it, these words came very clearly. None of the directives are definitive. None of the directives are definitive. And they were showing me the directives that Jesus Christ brought into the earth. And if you really look at his teaching, what he really said to do. He said, love, don't be angry, be kind to one another, look to God, and don't look to man for support. <coughs> Spend time with your inner nature. Take time apart. Be kind. Go to God. Be kind. Take time apart. Be kind. Do you hear this? This is not something that defines you, isn't it? And if someone came to you with the question, who am I, and you say, why don't you go love for a while, would they be satisfied with that answer? No. We seek that directive. We seek that something that's going to help us find ourselves with a definition. What Jesus didn't said did not tell you what to do with your life. It didn't define you. It only told you how to do your life. And then we had Moses way back in the Old Testament, and he brought in these wonderful commandments, we call them. And they were, don't kill, don't steal, don't lie, don't covet, don't take what isn't yours, and don't create gods, and don't use the power of God to miscreate. Honor your parents, honor the Sabbath, and honor God. Even in those directives, do they define you? Do they tell you who you are? They don't. They also only tell you how to live. They don't tell you what to do with your life. So what Spirit was showing me was definition, which is what we all seek. Definition, to be defined, to be definitive, is a precise outlining or defining of what you need to do. Something explicit, decisive. And it also creates limitations. Okay, just stay with me for a moment. And this is what I was told. In other words, the guidance from Jesus and Moses deals with the environment in which we grow because they were master gardeners. Historically, we have sought to define ourselves by directives. And these directives, these directives of the Ten Commandments were not enough. It was like, hmm, yeah, okay, <clears throat> if I don't kill, don't covet, okay, hmm, all right, we need more laws, please. Does anybody know how many laws are in the Old Testament? Yes. <laughs> Spoken from one of my seminary students, so you have to read every one of them. There are over 300 laws. 
in the Old Testament. Ten Commandments weren't enough. Because now we need laws, and we need laws that limit, and we need laws that punish. We need laws that say, if you do this, then you shall read this. We just don't need guidelines. We need to really get in there and get you locked in and tied down. And the people said, yes, we do. And everyone followed. Everyone wants that deeper directive that helps them define who they are. Freedom, and we did the same thing, by the way, with the New Testament. We took all of Jesus' teachings. And have you ever read the New Testament? Past the Gospels? <laughs> Past Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Mm -hmm. What is it a, a books of? Rules. If this happens, do this. You need to do that. This needs to be this. It, they're rules. They're guidance. And some of them are punitive. Some of them are shun your neighbor. Jesus Christ never said shun your neighbor. How does love one another as your brother ever become if your brother does not do what the collective chooses for him to do in our circle of worship, shun him to teach him a lesson? Rules. Taking great ideals or great guidances and trying to limit them and make rules out of them, trying to force behavior. Force behavior. You never will know who you are if your behavior is being forced. Okay? All right. Freedom to choose, we have the freedom to choose, yet when the freedom is given, we choose to make more rules. Mm. And that's what we've historically done. We choose to make more rules. We're free. Okay, let's make rules. <laughs> well, let's make some more. Those aren't working. Let's go down to the finite. And what does that do to our spirit and our soul? And every man looks to his church to tell him what rules to live by. And you think you don't, but you do. People who come to InterQuest for the first time, especially if they have any, any uh, experience with theology in any level, any doctrine, doesn't matter what doctrine, has rules. They'll come in and they'll chat with us and they'll sit in a Sunday service and they'll go, okay, that's interesting. And then they will say, maybe on the way out or maybe on the conversation sidebar with someone, they will say, what rules do you guys have? You know, and, and Patrick and I both say, we, or anyone else, we don't have rules. Mm -hmm. Oh, but if I join, how much is that going to cost me? Oh, now my mind goes, well, let's see. We can negotiate something here. <laughs> if you'd really like to pay something, but I do not want your firstborn. <laughs> it costs you nothing. It costs your energy investment. There are no rules. We don't require you to attend so many services. We don't require you to tithe. We don't require you to do anything. Everything at this church is built on choice, individual choice. You have the right to choose, and don't you know, I wish I could manipulate you, not really, but it would be easier. <laughs> it would be easier to stand here as a minister and make you feel guilty about not coming to pack the pews. You see, a little <coughs> pew packing idea. But we can't. People will often say, why, why is there such a flux in attendance? And I will always say, it's personal choice. It's a personal choice that gets them out of bed every morning to come. It's not an obligation to be here, unless you're in the choir. <laughs> <laughs> So within, when you really get into the teachings of a metaphysical Christian church, and Interquest in particular, what you find is that your personal <coughs> choice we honor implicitly for you. My personal choice I ask you to honor for me. And together we come together and we make collective choices as a whole. But not rules. Not rules. We might change our behavior from one day to the next. We might decide to do something differently. You see, in this small collective, we have a foundational space of really beginning to explore what freedom is about. But in this small collective, we have an agreement that you express your individual choice in harmony and love while you're here. 
And how, after you walk out the doors, it's up to you how you express. God's law is simple. Y'all know that? It's very simple. There are really no rules. There is personal responsibility. And this is what Jesus said. The universal laws happen. They, they keep this earth in balance. And they affect your life and you activate them. However, you are the creator of your world. And the only law is you will reap what you sow. Everything that you do, you will experience. Everything that you create, you will experience. You will affect others, those that want to play with you at that level. You are living in a world of personal responsibility. And most of us still have a challenge with personal responsibility. It's very challenging for us to say, I created this pain I'm going through. Well, at some level, you participated in this. You allowed it, you opened the door to it. I don't know if you actually crafted it. Personal responsibility. Personal responsibility is the only way to have true freedom. It's the only way you'll ever know your personal choice. Okay. In the Aquarian, this is chapter 109. Jesus is teaching. And he's talking about the Pharisees and how they control. They seem fair in their speech, but the rules are diabolical. And then this used this way or that way to self-serve. And he says, um, That which is thought, or wished, or done in the darkest night, shall be proclaimed in the brightest day. That which is whispered in the ear within the secret place shall be known upon the streets. In other words, there are no secrets in the universe. Have you guys gotten that yet? Mm -hmm. Okay. And in the judgment day, when all the books are opened up, these men and every other man shall be judged, not by what they've said or done, but by the ways in which they use the thoughts of God and how the ethers of eternal love were made to serve. They will be judged by how they mold the ethers of love. They may make these ethers serve the carnal or the holy self within. In other words, you will deal with your own creations. Do you all know when Judgment Day is? Every day. Every day. It's every day your creation comes back to you and says, Hello! <laughs> you go, Okay. Where'd you come from? It's every day. It's every day when you experience your creations in this world. And then you judge them. You decide. Oops. Let me change it. Let me not. But until you realize that personal responsibility had a hand in this, <coughs> where do we look? We look outside for someone to define us again, give us a rule so we don't do this anymore. Okay. Today, the fourth, we celebrate freedom. And, and I've just got three little points about our country. Um, our country was created to allow freedom to self-govern, freedom to worship, and basically freedom to buy and sell to set up commerce. Right? Overall? The government established this to allow the format to eventually create a space where the people as a whole could create their own world. That's the format that eventually it could evolve to a space where the people could create their own world. Personal choice down there. <laughs> it happens, you know? And so we just have to say interesting and honor it. There's a personal choice for that. But y'all, let's go back to following this. Um, Self-govern, worship, buy and sell. The format of our country was developed so that we could eventually grow into activating this. Now, it also has safety valves in our growth process. But we can look at this and say, well, we've kind of got it done, maybe, a little bit. There's a lot of safety valves going on. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't get a vote in. Do you know, it's almost like we fully haven't embodied this yet, this ideal that our forefathers set forth. Yes? Mm -hmm. It's kind of still wavering there. And what Spirit asked me to speak to you about is, you can take these same three and look within your own life. How much self-governing do you do? 
or do you seek advice always from others? How much self-governing do you do in your finances and affairs? Do you see? How much worship, freedom to worship, how much do you choose how you worship? Or do you wait till the traditional guilt takes you over and you decide that you need to get back in the saddle again? How much are you proactive with the way that you worship? And how much are you proactive with your commerce? Or you just follow whatever the latest thing happens to be, or you know what I'm saying? Until each one of us is proactive in being self-governing, being worship choosers, and choosers of how we invest our energy in the economy, our country can never rise to this ideal that was set up for it. Because it has to come within the hearts of the individuals. If it's not in our hearts, then what do we want? We want someone to do it for us. Oh, it's so easier to send somebody else to church. Go pray for me. 